Hey guys, Dante Ferrigno at Ferrigno Freedom Channel coming back at you one more time with another carnivore reaction. As this is the eighth week of my fasting experiment where I've been doing four days of eating, three days of fasting for eight weeks in a row. I'm halfway through my very last fast on this experiment. I thought it would be a good idea to take a look at this quick video by Dr. Boz, Dr. Annette Bosworth that is, and I'll put a link in the description for the video and for her channel. It's called, For God's Sake, Don't Do This When Fasting. It's only four minutes long, so this should be a quick look, but it's always a good thing to take a look at, especially while I've been talking about fasting, and I know a lot of you are taking a look at fasting. We should also take a look at some of the things we gotta be careful of doing when fasting. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this video up and ready here. A member of my support group screwed up royally while fasting. He thought he'd take fasting to the next level. Well, he did that all right. And the consequences are worse than he could have imagined. Tom was 360 pounds in his late 50s. Through low carb and keto and some fasting, he lost weight all the way down to his ideal weight of 180 pounds. Over the last few years, he's put some of that weight back on and is at about 224 pounds. He stalled and he was looking for a way to get back to his best weight. So he took on a fast. The first three days of his fast were fine. By day five, some warning signs started to happen. He got diarrhea and he analyzed that this must be that he didn't have enough electrolytes. So he started upping his electrolytes. As the next couple of days go by, he had a journal that if you go back and read, shows he was not thinking correctly. By day 10, Tom is in the emergency room. Tom had used the tool of a 10 day fast in the past. He was younger, his blood pressure wasn't as bad, he wasn't on a diuretic, and he did okay. But at this age, over the age of 70, a 10 day fast was certainly not what I advised. Tom's story gets a little worse. His sodium, while in the emergency room, was found to be 120. It's supposed to be 142. Getting it that low, is disastrous on your cells and on how your brain works. As he waited in line with several of the other folks in the emergency room, he grew frustrated. Like, this is just low sodium. Why don't I just take a bunch of salt? So he signed himself out, AMA, and headed home in an Uber. As he continued to drink a bunch of salt water, the next day, his sodium was back to normal. And he said, I'm fine. Look, I didn't need the doctor. Unfortunately, the consequences are more than he understands. A sodium that drops down to 120 and then bounces back up to normal the next day might sound safe, but it's not. That sodium decides how much water is on the inside and the outside of cells. We're specifically talking about Tom's brain cells. And when you switch it that quickly, it destroys those brain cells. Now, Tom paid that price. Four days later, he comes to the support group again and his pitting edema, you know, that shin print I teach was a three plus pitting edema. That means there was so much extracellular fluid in his legs and in many other cells of his body. My advice for Tom is steady as it goes. Yes, fasting is a wonderful tool. It is best done from a ketogenic state. So staying consistently keto and then adding fasting up to 72 hours does some beautiful things. Number one, you get the best burst of growth hormone during those 72 hours. Number two, you get a burst of norepinephrine. Your brain really does feel euphoric. And you get that insulin reset, which is what Tom really needs in order to get that long-term weight loss. And that also comes with practicing a tool, not just pushing hard for one 10-day fast, but instead reaching for eight consecutive weeks with a 72 hour fast. Hmm. That is the ultimate badge of honor in my practice. And when patients have done that, they really have lowered their insulin. Tom would have also lost weight and kept it off while keeping his brain cells. The other warning that Tom had was on day five, he got diarrhea. This was likely caused by this shift in electrolytes as well as the diuretic he was taking, a medication that is not okay to be on when you're fasting, at least out of the 
strict supervision of your physician. So are you ready to fast? Well, make sure you're ready. These are the three metabolic tests that I recommend before anybody does a fast. Check it out here. All right, that sounds like an interesting video to look at sometime as well. But I will say that uh, I was interested mostly because he was talking about longer fast, or at least I, I that's not what been, that's not what's, that's not what I've been doing. I've been doing exactly what she talked about at the end, eight weeks of 72 hour fasts. And I will say that I've noticed the, the brain, you know, the euphoria that I get sometimes from it. But I got to tell you, I miss eating when I'm when I'm in the middle of a fast like this. I could go for a ribeye right now. That would be wonderful. But at the same time, I'm trying to get the full benefit of what she talked about with the growth hormone and the norepinephrine and also the insulin reduction. The one thing I wasn't able to do on my fasting journey is to actually get my insulin level checked. It's, you know, it's a little costly to get a lot of these tests and it's something that I have to really plan for financially. So I didn't get any test. I'm trying to get my doctor to send me to do a test shortly after this. But I've noticed the numbers on my ketones and my blood glucose over the last eight weeks. And hopefully at the end of this fat, this experiment by Monday or Tuesday, I'll have a video out talking about my eight week fasting experiences what I noticed, what I was able to observe in the numbers, what I was able to observe bodily, how I felt physically, and uh, we'll, we'll have a report from somebody who lives in a ketogenic lifestyle, basically because carnivore has a ketogenic effect on the body as well because you're not consuming any carbohydrates. And the way I've been doing it is trying to eat earlier in the day as much as possible, although that has happened probably 50% of the time. It's just been uh, difficult to regulate the times based on my daily activity and all that's going on with my family. Life is life is chaotic sometimes, and I know it's hard for anybody to make plans on when they're going to eat and how much they're going to eat. I don't even like having to do that, but I wanted to be able to get this test out, and I've enjoyed the fasting. But it's good to know that you got to watch your electrolyte levels. Be careful with how long you're doing fasting, especially if you're older. Watching out for being on a diuretic. You don't want to be doing a, a fast while you're on a diuretic would not be helpful. So these are some good points to, for people to chew on before they decide to do a longer term fast. But you know those three day fasts seem to be really hitting the sweet spot for getting that rejuvenation. So I hope you found this useful for your edification on fasting and a carnivore way of eating. If you guys got any comments for me, I'd love to read them down here. But until next time, I'll see you later. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat? Be sure to check out for Rigno Freedom Facebook group. This group is private so that you don't have to worry about all your personal information being shared with all of your friends. We're just here to encourage each other and keep each other on track.